Hello, everybody. My name is Julius Jacob Shields. I was born in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. This is 11 years. I can't even say it. This is 11 years after the extraterrestrials made contact with me. This is my story. All right, so this was the first day when they made the initial contact. I woken up that morning, gone to my window, opened it up, stretched my arms out and just said, man, what a, what a great day. That's, that's something I've never done before. And then I closed the window, kind of turned the blinds a little bit, and then I sat down, got on the phone with my girlfriend. And uh, a few minutes later, I see this like, it was almost like, it was almost like a balloon. Like it was, it was just shaped like, it was almost like a balloon that had, you know, a little bit thicker of a string. And it's just going just back and forth, very, at a, at a nice steady pace, just back and forth across the wall. And I'm, th I don't even know, I'm thinking maybe it's like a shadow. It was a bird flying around, you know, something out there. Um, but then my, my dog Hunter is now barking in that direction, in the direction where I'm sitting. Like he's barking at somebody, just barking, barking, barking for, you know, five, ten minutes. And I'm just trying to just listen to my girlfriend and just enjoy a conversation. And I look back over and on my door where there was the most light, I saw, I, I saw it. It was about, it was about maybe about that big. It just had a body like this. Eyes turned to the side and it had three tentacles and it raised them up and it started tapping on my window. And that was the first time I'd ever seen something that wasn't human. Something I'd never seen before and something I couldn't explain. And when I saw that, I, I just froze. I, I didn't make a move. It gets kind of blurry what happened, but I just know that I left my house and I went to my buddy Nathan's and I told him exactly what had just happened and what I had just saw. Now, because this was 11 years ago, obviously I don't remember everything that happened in that day, so I'm going to go into the next day. So the next night, I'm sitting in my room on my bed, it's raining all over my window that's about you know three four feet long i just hear taps from i mean every on every inch of that window there was just taps going on which is impossible to be rained because there's a deck over over my window so there's just no way in hell that that's rain and i immediately took off and i went back to my buddy nathan's house I told him what was going on, man, and we went to bed. Now, the third night, I'm sitting there in my bed, and I look over across the room, and then there's just this orb of light, probably about, about softball size, just an orb of light. I look over at it, see it, and it just, doo -doo, just floats off into my ceiling and is gone. Once again, I fled. I did not know what else to do and what I was experiencing. All I knew was to just flee and to just go find somewhere else that was safe. Now, since this is years later, I've had plenty of time to think and analyze this stuff. So what I believe happened is they initially were like, hey buddy, you know, we're not from here. 
we kind of want to do some tests. We don't know what you are. You don't know what we are. Like, let's, you know, let's, let's figure out what, what we are. And because I fled, they had no other option but to just take me and do their tests. Because it got so bad that I left the basement. After that third night, I said, I'm not sleeping in the basement anymore. And I moved upstairs to the upstairs room that's on the outer edge of the house. So it goes room and then the outside neighbor's house, you know. And I would move up there. And that was when the abduction started. I don't know exactly when it started. I just know that I would go into these dreams. It started out more violent, like I would be at war in a battle. And one specific dream I remember is I woke up and I was in this like I was in this arena, like gladiator style, and I'm looking around and I just see all these creatures and goblins and ghouls just all in the stands, and I don't know what's going on. And then like this like teal like blob monster just falls down in front of me, boom. And a weapon spawned in my hand and just instantly I just went boom and just stabbed him. And it was like, I, I mean, like I had just won. I mean, the crowd went nuts. I felt like accomplished, like I had just won something. And then I, and then I, and then I'd wake up in my bed and I'd hear this sound outside my room every single time I, I don't know if I can mimic it, but it, it almost it just sound like a saucer. It was just like this. And, and, and it'd be gone every time after these dreams. And then there was a, a, a full week straight because then it, then it got more, then it got more sexual because there was a full week straight where I was having wet dreams every night. I was, having sex with different creatures and that were women and just different stuff. And I would wake up and I would look at my pants and sometimes there'd be nothing. And sometimes there would just, it would, it would just be wet. There would be no actual sperm in there. Uh, and I, I just, I, I didn't know what to think, but I just knew that, there was just something going on because why, like, why am I hearing this stuff? Why am I having these dreams? You know, I was scared for myself. I didn't know what was going to happen, but you know, as the years progressed, I, I realized, you know, for evolution, you know, this is amazing. You know, these creatures came down, analyzed me, figured out what I was, what I could do, you know, the different kind of things I liked and liked to do, you know, and then I harvested my sperm and did whatever with life and just went through evolution. Uh, now, years later, I would go on to meet my uncle, thanks to my wife. I got reconnected with my uncle, Tylen, uh, And, you know, we would talk, I would talk, tell him about this stuff, about what happened to me all those years, because we would talk about how we grew up, you know, and what we experienced and different things. And, and I told him about this and, and he froze. He almost didn't even know what to say. And then he revealed to me that, that he was having the same experiences around the same time I was. He said it would be in this sedated like dream state. But he said for him, he was having sex with like what, whatever he wanted. Like in his mind and he envisioned, which was like anime girls. That's what he told me that he was having sex with those and he would wake up and there would be nothing in his shorts and he would know that he ejaculated and he'd wake up and there would be nothing in his shorts and it's just amazing that this could happen at the same time now I've, I've done my research on this stuff and i know that what came to me they're called the grays 
they're not a very big creature. They're only, they're, they're only about three to four feet tall. They drive saucers and they have a mothership and It's almost astonishing, but it just makes you realize and just know that there's just more to life than just what we have here on earth. And that's why I would take use the rest of my life to travel and experience as much as I can before it's all over because, well, there's definitely I'm not going to go into what's beyond death, but. And drugs weren't a part of your life at that time? Well, at that time, you know, marijuana was, was playing big. It was just, uh, it was the party thing, you know. Being the boys, that's how, that's how I grew up was, was smoking weed. And I, and I know when people would say, you know, well, because I, I, I was told that, you know, oh, well, it was just the weed, blah, blah, blah. Well, I haven't stopped smoking weed since, and ain't nothing hap like that ever happened again. And then they wanted to try and say, well, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, you're just schizophrenic. Okay, well, schizophrenia don't just come and go. They don't just come for six months, and then I would have all these crazy experiences, and I would hear these sounds, and, and I would actually see the thing on the wall. And then, you know, it, schizophrenia just goes away. No, that's not how that works, so... Yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to, I've ruled out everything, but it's just the fact that, you know, I, I saw it on the wall as my dog was barking in the direction, and then I would hear the taps on the windows and then the orbs. So they, they, they tried a, a more like orthodox way to just be like, hey, let's just reach out and just see if he's willing to come with us and do these experiments. And since I wasn't, I was so scared and so fearful, they had to just take me and just sedate me and just put me in a dreamlike state. And it was so easy for them because my bed was literally right next to the wall. So it was so easy for them to just come down, pull me over, keep me in a dreamlike state as soon as I was asleep, do these experiments, whatever they wanted to do, and then just push me right back and I, and I would wake up and... And it, it would be like it was all a dream, but it was real because then how else would my uncle be, be having the same experience, be having, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. And I, I know for a fact, someone has done some research and has known that there is a sort of like UFO highway, sort of say, that goes right over Kansas City. It goes, east to west across the United States, and it goes right through Kansas City. You're, you're in a rural area, or you were in a, did you, you know, like a more populated area? Uh, I would say it was just your regular neighborhood. I mean, it was more of an elderly in the neighborhood. But no neighbors saw it, nothing like that? No, nothing. It was just the dog. So I don't. But it was early enough in the day that nobody would have been awake. I mean, the sun had the sun had just come up and was just starting the day. And it was just starting to get light out. And so do you ever think about, you know, what might have happened if you had decided to go with them? Because that seems to be what they wanted, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously they, they wanted to do some kind of tests and just, you know, figure out what a human being was. And at the time, if I had been brave enough to just stand up and just open my window and go, what is going on out here? And for just have them to say, you know, hey, we want you to come with us and, you know, we have tests and stuff we want to do, I would have gone. Just knowing how I was at the time, just, you know, so interested in everything and wanting to explore and experience that I, I would have gone 100%. Whether or not they would have brought me back or not, I don't know, but I, I would have gone for sure. Uh, yeah. And to think about it now, I mean, it's just, it's almost astonishing for evolution. 
And then to have my uncle go through the same experiences is just, it's like mind boggling, man, it's eerie. But it's not a bad. It's, I don't. It's not a bad thing though, because you know I'm alive. They were. They weren't coming to kill you. No, they weren't coming to kill me. You know, I still have had a really great life, and you know they they allowed me to achieve that because at the time I I, I would have gone nowhere. I would have just partied and just gone down the drain and and been flushed out. But how how has that experience uh, changed your life or your behavior? You're, you're working I'm more, your job? I'm, I'm more daring, definitely. When it comes to travel, so this happened when I was probably 17. Uh, when I was around, because this, this didn't stop my life. This just added to it, you know? Like nothing changed, it just, it just added to it and it just opened my mind and just allowed me to think more. Yeah, I just think it's incredible for what can happen with evolution. I know it's been about 10, 11 years, so I'd give it maybe another another 10 years or so. And then I'm curious to see what happens because if it is real and I do have, you know, extraterrestrial children and they use my, you know, sperm to harvest and, and, and recreate life and do whatever, you know, I would really hope that those individuals wouldn't be brainwashed enough to be able to come back and try to figure out, you know, where it all started. And maybe they would come back to me and try to get, and maybe take me with them or maybe out of their own curiosity, just wanted to know what earth was like and, and where their life had started. And borrow some money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some space money. <laughs> All right, Julius. Thank you so much for sharing yeah, your story. Man, man, thank you for having me. I, I greatly appreciate it. Fascinating. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.